Hello, everyone. Today I'm going to introduce to you my superstar, Omar Montasser, like father like son. So he's going to explain to you something about fractions and how to add them. Go ahead, Omar. Hello, my name is Omar. I'm going to be giving my dad a break today and I'm going to be explaining how to add fractions. Okay, so the first thing we start with is putting a long line and then we do three times four, which will give you 12 as your common denominator that goes below the line. And then we do four times two, which will give you eight. And then you put a plus sign right beside the eight. And then we do three times one, which will give you three. And then that will equal 11 over 12. Okay, so the first thing we do is find the common denominator. So we look at the biggest number first, and then we see if the smallest number can go into the biggest number. Okay, so if three goes into six, your common denominator will be six. So now we need to make the denominators the same. So you do three times two. And then whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So you do two times two. So now we do one over six plus four over six, which equals five over six. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the third method. When we add fractions, we have to find the lowest common denominator. To find the common denominator, you look at the biggest number and see if the smallest number can go into the biggest number. Since eight can't go into 12, you look for the next multiple of 12, which is 24. And yes, eight goes into 24. And therefore, our lowest common denominator is 24. Now we write a long line and then you put 24 underneath. So now you do 24 divided by eight, which will equal three. And then you do three times three, which will give you nine. And then you put a plus sign next to the nine. And then we do the same thing to the other fraction. So 24 divided by 12 will equal two. And then we do two times five, which will give you 10. And then you add the nine and the 10, which will give you 19. And then you keep the bottom the same, which will be 24. And now I'll be showing you why I don't recommend the first method. And now I'm gonna be showing you how to do this example with the first method. Now you put a long line and then you do five times 25, which will give you 125. So now you do 25 times two, which will give you 50 and you write that on top. And then you put a plus sign. And then you do five times seven, which will give you 35. And then you add 50 and 35, which will give you 85. And you leave the 125 on the bottom. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it with the third method. And again, if you want to find the common denominator, you look at the biggest number and see if the smallest number can go into the biggest number. And yes, five can go into 25. And yes, 25 is our lowest common denominator. And then you do 25 divided by five, which will give you five. And then you do five times two, which will give you 10. And then you do plus sign right beside it. And then you do 25 divided by 25, which will give you one. And then you do one times seven, which will give you seven. And then you add 10 and seven, which will give you 17. And as always, keep the denominator the same, which will give you 25. So are these two answers the same? We can't reduce this fraction, but we can reduce that. Top and bottom reduced by five. 
85 divided by 5 will give you 17, and 125 divided by 5 will give you 25. In the first method, we didn't choose the lowest common denominator, so we had to reduce. So I highly recommend the third method. This is my first video, so please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on my next video. Thanks for watching, and peace out.